Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be talking about the difference between global warming and the destruction of the ozone layer. Now those are two topics that are usually talked about when studying increasing populations, sustainability. So when we think about populations and the, their impact on the environment, we usually consider global warming and how it arises and the effects that has. And so the reason why I'm making this video is to explain the difference between the two because the two in some degree are related but they are two different processes. So for this I'm going to use this picture of the earth here that I'm just going to drop down and we're going to start by talking about global warming. Now for this I'm just going to draw in just a very rough sketch a sun. We're going to put the sun up here just going to quickly shade this in. So we've got a sun there. Okay. Global warming is essentially, as, as the name suggests, our overall increased temperature, a warming of our Earth. And often linked to the term global warming are the greenhouse gases. Now, in a greenhouse, the, the glass sort of outer surrounding layer traps heat within it. And that's what effect we kind of get here we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere we also have water vapor and we have methane ch4 so methane gas now those three are referred to as the greenhouse gases because as their concentrations increase in the atmosphere what they do and i'll just highlight this in by red dots what they do is form this sort of outer layer if you like, around the Earth. So these greenhouse gases, CO2, methane, and water vapour, they form this sort of ring, if you like, around the Earth. So I'll just label those as, well, let's just put a CO2, methane, layer. Now what that does is affect the UV rays that are coming from the sun. So the sun will emit various wavelengths of radiation and we're going to draw these in, I'll draw these in black. So much of the radiation that it emits is of short wavelength and those short wavelengths of that short wave rate wavelength radiation passes through this layer to the earth and the earth would absorb that shortwave radiation. When it absorbs that shortwave radiation it warms up a little as such but it emits longer wave radiation so the waves that then are emitted from the earth are a slightly longer wavelength. Now some do pass out beyond this sort of CO2 methane layer that you have around but much of it is reflected back. This CO2 methane layer is able to trap that radiation, that sh longer wave radiation. It's able to absorb it and so that layer heats up and so the earth as a whole would heat up. And you can imagine that every time that you go to emit this radiation, it continually just bounces back if you like. So the rays ultimately, the UV rays from the sun penetrate through this layer to the earth and as the earth radiates them back out they're trapped within this CO2 layer of greenhouse gases they're called, so just can increase the layer there. Now this overall effect is what we mean by global warming, a sort of overall warming of the Earth. And I think recent studies suggest that I think it's about, in terms of temperature rises, I think we're, we're thinking about 0 0.06 degrees Celsius rise every 10 years, which doesn't seem a great deal, but it does actually have drastic effects. So that's a little bit about global warming and these greenhouse gases. Now that's different to the destruction of the ozone layer. So what I'm going to do here is just draw 
So this is on the right hand, left hand side rather, this global warming that we're thinking about. And now we're going to look at the destruction of the ozone layer. So I'm just going to draw in a very poor sketch of the Earth. It's not to scale at all. I'm just drawing a very small section of the diagram from the left to help me explain it. So I'll cover the scene now, just get a bit of green just for the landmass. So there we go, very simple rough sketch of portion of Earth. Now what you have is something called O3. O3 is an allotrope of oxygen. Now an allotrope is a different form of an element. So the word I just used there was allotrope. It's an allotrope of oxygen called O3 or ozone. Now we have this ozone in the Earth's atmosphere. So I'll just represent this this time as little blue dots. But we have a concentrated layer of ozone and it's that concentrated layer that is referred to as the ozone layer. So we have the ozone layer, concentrated region of ozone, this O3, allotrope of oxygen. Now we have UV rays coming from the sun and normally this ozone layer protects us. It, it stops those harmful UV rays from entering into the Earth's atmosphere and causing damage, which we'll talk about in a moment. But there is a chemical, or chemicals rather, called CFCs. Now that stands for chloro fluoro carbons. So CFCs, or chlorofluorocarbons, found in fridge coolants and also in aerosol cans are chemicals that when released actually interact and react with these UV rays. Now when these CFCs, so we'll just draw, let's say we draw a few CFC particles here as red asterisks, when these CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons react with the harmful UV rays, they actually produce very reactive chlorine atoms. So these go on to produce reactive chlorine atoms. And those reactive chlorine atoms react with the ozone and destroy it. So the CFCs interact with the UV rays that allows for the formation of chlorine atoms that are very reactive and those chlorine atoms react with the ozone this O3 and destroy it and then that ultimately leaves holes or gaps in this ozone layer because we've destroyed it. Now if there were a, a gap or a hole right where I put a big X here, so let's say we've damaged that ozone, then you can see that those harmful UV rays would pass into the Earth's atmosphere and that has devastating consequences. UV rays or a rise in UV rays would significantly increase the rate of skin cancers and also, an increase in UV rays, not, not often taught on spec, but it can actually d damage um, phytoplankton populations in the sea. You know, if you've studied ecology, you know that phytoplankton is a producer that is sort of the base, if you like, of many marine food webs. F marine or aquatic food webs really rely upon phytoplankton as a producer. So you can see this hole in the ozone letting these UV, UV rays in can have devastating consequences. Now the use of CDFCs is um, controlled, but this is ultimately what has led to the destruction of the ozone layer. CFCs, or these chlorofluorocarbons, released into the atmosphere, producing reactive chlorine atoms that have damaged this ozone layer, this protective ozone layer. So there we have, in this video, the difference between global warming and the destruction of the ozone layer. Okay, hope all that helps.